This is the 20th girl. All the preparations have been completed, Master Arkham. Does your young bride suspect anything? Nothing. Art of the Moon is merely a box. A new Brian de Bray will soon become one of us. Bring me your bride and infant son at the appointed time so we can prepare them for tonight. They will be here, Master. Hear me, Melius. Hear me, Melius. In a few hours, the ceremony will be over and you will be free for all time. Sir Richard Flynn speaking. Who? No, it's it's okay. Connect it through. Richard? Richard, I've got to see you right away. Angela, you're driving me crazy. Now, 24 hours ago, you said you could never see me again. Now, what's going on? I can't talk now, but believe me, Richard, I wouldn't call you if I knew anyone else to turn to. All right. When do you want to meet me? As soon as you can. I'll be off in about half an hour. I'm at the Maple Street Warehouse. Maple Street? That's your uh, husband's address, isn't it? Richard, please. I can't explain now. Just get here as soon as you can. <sighs> OK, Angela. I'll be there. <clears throat> Angela? Angela? <sighs> when?
Richard, sweetheart. What? Time to get up. I know. Is anything the matter? No, I just don't understand how you can be so cheerful so early in the morning. <laughs> it's really disgusting. Carried away. Sorry. What made 
to take something like this up anyway. I don't know. I just got an urge a couple of years ago. You just got an urge? I know. It sounds ridiculous, but it's the truth. You know, there aren't many instructors who would let you freestyle with live steel like this. Yes, I know. <laughs> and that's why I'm mad about you. <laughs> and what about Stacy? Well, I'm mad about her, too. You see, uh, Stacy and I have always been better friends than lovers. Well, even if you don't buy that, that's no reason to bar a little raucous, illicit sex between instructor and pupil. How about lunch? <laughs> You're too much. Is Eddie still working out with you? Yeah, and you know he's getting pretty good, too. Oh, I'm late. I'll see you next Thursday. <sighs> Must be my breath. Look, Milligan, you might consider yourself the modern-day Sherlock Holmes. That's terrific, all right? But I don't mind telling you, with this new slasher case, my men don't know what the fuck is going on. Come in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Come on, sit on, sit on, kid. I'll be right with you. Look, Milligan, if you don't like the job my men are doing, why don't you bring somebody else in? Like who? Like Richard Flynn, that's who. Look, I know he is no longer on the force. What does that have to do with anything? I thought the idea here was to catch that bastard and maybe save a few lives. Look. Look, Milligan, who cares whether he's a brother officer or not? Look, listen, I've got somebody in my office here, all right? And I don't want to start using four-letter words in front of non-brother officers. See ya, Milligan. Look, if I uh, come at a bad time, I can... No, I think nothing of it, all right? Milligan is an asshole. If I call him back in another four hours, he's still going to be an asshole. He can wait. What's on your mind? Well, Detective Green, I'm trying to get... Just make it Eddie, will you? Eddie. Thanks. Well, Eddie, I'm, I'm trying to get a hold of a friend of yours. Um, in fact, it was a man you were talking about on the phone. Richard Flynn? Yes. Well, well, I guess you know he's no longer on the force. In fact, now he makes his living going after most wanted criminals for bounty. A little private detection firm right down the road in Lava Springs. Yes, I, I, I know that, too. Well, if you know that, what are you coming to see me for? Why don't you just call him directly? Well, I tried writing him and, and calling him, but uh, he won't answer me. Mm-hmm. Not like Richard Flynn to do that. He doesn't cold shoulder people, unless he has a good reason. Well, uh, perhaps in my case, he feels like he has a good reason. You see, my name's Terry Nash. My mother was Angela Nash. Angela? So you're the baby. I was the baby. So you decided to take your mother's maiden name for your last name instead of your father's, huh? Eddie, I've got to see him. Okay, kid, I'll make you a deal. I suppose you tell me why it's so important for you to see Richard Flynn, and then maybe I'll tell you if I can help you. morning, aren't you? Yeah, sorry. The paper's sending me to interview this psychic investigator. His name is Guy Zupan or something. Well, what's the rush? Well, the appointment is clear across town, and I left his file at my place. It's kind of an odd assignment for you, isn't it? <sighs> Not really. Uh, it's related to the demon slasher case. Demon slasher case? You mean those serial killings of those young girls? Yeah, that's what the papers are calling it. Pretty tasteless, huh? Not for your paper. Oh, ha, ha. Well, I see you tonight. Uh, let me call you, okay? Sure. Okay. See you later. See ya. Yes, Angela. I've got to talk to you. This is the last time we'll be together. 
You're not serious. I'm going to marry Brian Dunbury. I can't believe you're saying this. You know no one will ever love you as much as I do. Yes, I do know that, Richard. And I love you too. I always will. But there's a good reason why I'm marrying Brian. And an even more important one why I'm not marrying you. Angela, this doesn't make any sense. Our needs are so different. But I think I could make Brian happy. Look, if, if you don't want to marry me, okay, I understand that. There are a lot of good reasons for that. But Angela, please, don't marry Brian Devery. He's not what he appears to be. And that religious group he hangs out with, there's something very wrong about that whole setup. I've made up my mind, Richard. Please, don't try to change it. Well, I guess it's nothing more to say, except that I love you, and I'll always love you. I'll always love you. I'll always love you. I'll always love you. to you, kid. That's about the most incredible story I think I've ever heard. I, I know it is, Eddie. I, I don't blame you if you don't believe it, but I was hoping this picture might carry some weight. <sighs> Leo Arkham, the head of the cult that killed your mother. Isn't that Brian Devery next to him, your father? Yeah. So, what's the point of the photo? Well, look at the car in the background. Good eye, kid. They didn't have cars like that 20 years ago, did they? And that's how long those guys have been dead. Where'd you get this photo? I took it myself, right here in Lava Springs, two weeks ago. Let's go find Richard Brynn. Ah, there's Flynn's car. Must be going shopping.
Go on. good down there. That's where it belongs. You guys okay? Yeah, I'm afraid it's all over. Hey, guys, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's all cleaned up. Good timing, guys. Eddie. Freddy. Yeah. Get this woman some medical attention. We are sure. Damn, Dan. A lot of injured people back on that aisle. Get that ambulance over here right away, all right? Yeah. Very brave thing to do, young man. Thank you. Well, Richard, say hello to Terry Nash. Hello. Mr. Zupan, you have never sought publicity before. So why have you contacted the press at this time? No, 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 no. Not the press, Miss Brent. You. Me? Yes. I know you to be a fair and non-exploitive member of your profession. And what I have to tell you is very important. And what is that, Mr. Zupan? This killer you refer to as a demon slasher. I know who it is, for I don't know exactly where he is. I've been searching for him for many years. But I can tell you this. Ten girls have died. Ten more will die before the next full moon. How can you know this? Twenty years ago, in this same region, this same group performed the same ceremony. But what you don't know is that one of those murdered girls was my daughter. Oh, oh Mr. Zupan, I am so sorry. They are here, Miss Brent, within the boundaries. Lava Springs.
You see, Richard, I'm not dead. I need you to come after me. Angela. Angela, I, I miss you so much. But you must come for me. There's little time left. But why, why can't we just leave now? Because you're not really here. But I am. You must come for me when you're awake. I don't understand. I, I don't know what you mean. I must warn you about something. Who's coming? I, I don't know what you mean. I, I don't understand. Hello? I'm sorry to call so late, Flynn. What is it, Eddie? Now, now, don't get pissed. I want you to see this kid. Do it for me, will you, Richard? He's shown me something I think you ought to see. Okay, Eddie, anything for you. I'll do it. How's was 9 o'clock in the morning. All right, where? Church of the Blessed Saint. Sister Mary's office. Eddie, I'll, uh, I'll be there. Good night, Trooper. Good night. Well, kid, congratulations. You're batting a thousand. <laughs> What was that? That's just my shorts expanding. No, really, I heard something over there. Jeannie, it's a forest. It was probably just a rabbit or something. <laughs> This is Terry. There's been another murder. Miss Brent, there is one more person you should speak with. Her name is Madame Oleska. I'm so very glad you called, Miss Brent. Geyser Pan speaks very highly of you and your work. Thank you. Madame Oleska, what can you tell me about the Dark of the Moon ceremony? It is performed all over the world by various unrelated satanic groups. The group Mr. Zupan is following are called the Perennials. It is a terribly sadistic and savage religion, almost as old as man itself. Why are they called the Perennials? Because it is rumored that they never die, and not in the sense that we know death. Uh, they are supposed to have mastered a means of cloning, though not in the scientific sense. Uh, but, of course, this is a legend that has never been proven. And they can never be killed? Only by sacred steel. That is to say, a knife or a sword that have been blessed. I've... I've never heard any of this before. It's not written about in any of the usual books available on Satanism, uh, except for some very old ones from Germany and England. Why is this group considered so much more dangerous? You must understand that most satanic cultists are unorganized and rather sick people. They do terrible things because they are inspired by Satan. You understand? I always thought that cults only worship Satan. I'm afraid you're confusing the deity with the parishioners. Then you seriously mean they are actually linked to Satan? Linked, my dear. They are his children. Having some trouble? 
Yes, I know nothing about cars. Well, I'm not exactly an expert myself, but I'd be glad to take a look for you. Oh, thank you. Sure. Mr. Flynn, not only have I raised Terry Nash, but as you may know, I raised his mother as well. And I can give you my personal assurance that a finer, more honest man does not exist. Terry told me there have been two attempts to kidnap him in the last six weeks. That's right, Mr. Flynn, and I, I'm, I'm sure it has something to do with this Leo Arkham and Brian's everything. You people are hitting me awfully hard with all this, and uh, I've had a rather tough morning. Hey, what about the picture, Richard? Oh, come on, Eddie. You know how easy those things are to fake. Motive, Trooper. I mean, what possible reason could this kid have for putting you on? You're getting real skeptical in your old age, buddy. Skeptical? I'm skeptical. You show me a picture of two guys that I killed 20 years ago, Eddie. I killed them with my own hands, and there's blood all over me. And this kid says he took it two weeks ago. And in it, Eddie, not only are they not dead, they haven't aged. And you're surprised I'm skeptical? All right, all right. Forget about the picture, all right? Last night, Terry called me up. He knew about the Lover's Lane killing before we even found out. Oh, and you call yourself a detective? Why, if anything, the thing that would suggest to me is that the reason the kid knows something about it is because he's in on it somehow. Flynn, that is absolute bullshit. Yes, Mr. Flynn. Bullshit. Sister Mary, I have only one thing I wish to say to you. And what is that, Mr. Flynn? Goodbye.
of your stupidity. Flynn is still alive. He and that policeman are all that stand between us and the child. Please, give me one more chance. I'm afraid you'll have to make your plea for a greater power. I tried to warn you, Richard. Warn me about what? About the men with the swords at the waterfall. There is much danger. Oh, 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 it's me, thank Christ's sake. Yeah, I heard about that incident today out there on the bridge. Why didn't you tell me, huh? I must have just slipped my mind. Oh, yeah. Sure. Listen, I gotta talk to you about that incident today. Trooper, you're not gonna believe this. When those guys got out there on the scene... When your guys got there, your bodies were gone. Just like with Angela 20 years ago. How did you know? Because they're back, Eddie. It's happening all over again. So then you do believe the story about Arkham and Devery, and you know now that that Terry kid is on the, on the level. Yeah, I'm a believer. But I'm still not sure what part that kid plays in all of this. I don't know. If it's possible, Angela's still alive, but I think she's trying to communicate with me through my dreams. Four years ago, out of nowhere, I decide to take up fencing. And then later broadswords. And then today, about a dozen guys attack me with broadswords. And I survived because I know how to use one. Now, doesn't that strike you as kind of an odd coincidence? Odd? <laughs> Hell yes. It's no coincidence, Eddie. Something big's about to happen. Something... Something evil. And somehow it centers around that kid and the night Angela died. Sentinel of the darkness, send me your soldiers! All right, I'm here. What is it? The way you treated young Terry Nash the other morning in my presence was unforgivable. You couldn't hope to meet a finer boy. Sister, let's not forget that uh, I had the distinct displeasure of knowing Terry's father on a very intimate basis. In fact, I killed him just as he was about to slit young Terry's throat. What Brian Devery was like has nothing whatsoever to do with Terry. <sighs> I appreciate your feelings, but please don't tell me how I should feel. You don't understand, Mr. Flynn. There are many things in this matter of which you are unaware. Sister Mary, could you possibly please come to the point? The day Angela Nash died, I made her a promise. A promise which I have since regretted thousands of times. The matter I promised to be silent about, Mr. Flynn, concerns you. 
And I have decided, after great deliberation, that I can no longer keep that promise. Sister Mary, what could you possibly tell me that would alter my feelings? I can tell you that Terry Nash is not Brian Depper's son. What do you mean? Haven't you noticed, Mr. Flynn, there's absolutely no physical resemblance between Terry and Brian Devery? For that matter, there's very little between Angela and Terry. However, he does bear a strong resemblance to someone, Mr. Flynn. Do you think a master detective like yourself can guess who? Do, do you mean... Are you trying to, to tell me that... Yes, Mr. Flynn. Terry Nash is your son. The dark of the moon is almost upon us. A shock for you finding out suddenly that uh, I'm your father. No, actually, I've, I've known for some time. How? Sister Mary told me. Why did she tell you and not tell me? Well, she promised Mom she wouldn't tell you. She didn't promise she wouldn't tell me. Well, why didn't you tell me? I wanted to many times, but to do so would have betrayed Sister Mary's trust. I guess you're right. My dear, you will soon be reunited with your son. Good afternoon, gentlemen. What may I help you with? Well, Stacy Brent seems to think that you can supply us with some information relating to the local rash of cult-related killings. I can help you a great deal, Mr. Flynn, but much of what I will tell you, you may not believe, unless, of course, I can prove that my psychic powers are genuine. And how do you propose to do that? Would it surprise you to know that I know that Terry Nash is your son? Who told you that? Your Angela. She's only been dead for 20 years. She is not dead, Mr. Flynn. Oh, I knew this was a wasted trip. Come on, Flynn, let's get out of here. Hey, let her talk. She is in a dark place, an evil place. She is a prisoner there. Dark forces hold her. And unless she is saved from what they have planned for her, something horrible will befall the whole world. And I thought Rod Shirley was dead. Eddie, please. She's not dead? She is in a state of suspended animation. But she's not dead. She is in the antechamber, the dream chamber. And where is this place? Where the sacrifice is to be performed. It is near, very nearby. What sacrifice? The sacrifice that you interrupted so many years ago, Mr. Flynn. The sacrifice of Angela and your son, Terry. But he's grown up. But this does not matter, Mr. Flynn. They want Terry for a very special reason, other than his innate goodness. But this is not quite clear to me yet. Many people appeared to be good. But when temptation was laid before them, they could not resist. So Brian Devery found her. She appeared as an angel of light, and soon she came to love him. He laid before her all manner of temptation, but she took none of it. She was the perfect human sacrifice, she and her baby. Have you not noticed how everything is in increments of 20, 20 years, 20 female sacrifices? It has to do with the planets being properly aligned. How can you possibly know all this? Once the 20th girl dies, it is only a matter of 24 hours before the sacrifice of Angela and Terry. If your calculations are right, the girl has turned up missing every two days. That means it's less than a week. Terry's life is not in danger until the actual ceremony. 
They need him alive. And as time grows nearer, they're going to be even more desperate to get a hold of Terry. If you die in the chamber, your spirits will be trapped. If the ceremony is completed and the gates open, the demons below will have free reign on the earth, unopposed, perhaps, forever. So what do we do next? Prepare to fight them in a way that will end this evil. Get dead. Guy Zupan missing. How are we gonna find Arkham's chamber? We'll have to hold up at my place and wait for Arkham to make the next move. Look, it's okay. I want you out of this. This is not your fight. I want you to go home to Oregon, and I mean tonight. Eddie's on his way. Sacred steel, huh? All right. If that's what it takes, we'll give them all the sacred steel they can eat. <laughs> Is that it for the day? <sighs> yeah, I've had it. I'm gonna sit out here for one more day. You guys did good today. Same time tomorrow? Oh. Get out of here. <laughs> I'll see you later. Sure, yeah. Goodbye. I wanna go get some sack time. Nice work, kid. Thank God. Terry. Yeah? Stick with Eddie. Got it. Tell Freddie and Dan you're going to be in the house. Okay. Freddie, is everything okay out there? Yeah, everything's dead. Well. Just uh, keep in touch on schedule and, uh, and keep your eyes peeled, okay? I will, yep. I'm sorry to have startled you, but I've had a problem with my car, and I was wondering if you could help me. Well, uh, sure, sure. Uh, of course, of course. But excuse me just one moment, please. Dan, you there?
get away from her! stops here. And this must be the entrance. Make sure you place those charges all along here so they'll bring the whole roof down. All right. And Eddie. Yeah. If Angela, Terry, and I don't make it out, just make sure nobody else does either. Come on. Destroy him!
you intend to do with that? Send you to hell. Not with that sort. That one belongs to one of my soldiers. Yours is over there. No, get out first!
unlikely event that you boys should ever be back, we'll be ready. We'll always be ready. What'd you say to him? I told him... I told him to go to hell. Troubles over.